Oh, for Pete's sakes, did we just spend the past 45 minutes talking to ourselves without the camera on? <sighs> Good grief. Hey everyone, happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend and were able to get plenty of stitching done. And if you didn't get stitching done, maybe errands or something that had to be done so that you can stitch all the things today, maybe, if we're lucky. Um, I had a good weekend, went on a couple of, of adventures with uh, my mom and my sister. Um, more on that in the yarn section because everything I do these days is completely and totally yarny. There was something else I was going to talk to you guys about here in the... Oh, I remember. Thanks for all the compliments about my hair last week. Um, the dirty secret for that is, that is my lazy hair. That is, I get in to the shower, I get it wet. Um, shampoo, it's Monday. Shampoo doesn't usually happen on Monday. Shampoo happens on Sundays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. But anyway, now you know way too much about my shampoo habits. Anyway, that's lazy hair. That's get in, get showered, just... Sometimes and just let it dry naturally, kind of part it, maybe some hairspray so it doesn't fall into my face at all. So that, last week's hair is lazy hair. Um, we're still playing with my lighting. Um, it was too dark in the background um, last week when I reviewed the footage, so we'll see what we get today. I moved some stuff around. Um, who knows? We can still try. I mean, I'm almost into 100 of these things. You'd think I'd have it figured out by now. Not a chance. So, anyway, we all know what you're here for. Project report, because that's what you're here for. We all know that, right? No hiding behind it. Anyway, this week I was smart and I remembered to bring home inspiration. This one is designed by Rosewood Manor and I sort of folded it up so you can see most of what I've done. There's just a little bit here. Anyway, so here's kind of the full piece. There we are. That's in frame of how I've got done. Um, but for the past three or so weeks, I've really just been working over here in this little section. Um, lots of little flowers to do, lots of color changes. I did the uh, cornucopia horn thing this week, and then all these flowers the last past couple weeks. So it's... It's looking nice. I'm really quite excited to uh, see it come come together, come alive. I have, well you can see right here, this point here, there's a little diamond uh, border that will go down here that matches this diamond border. There it is. So that'll all match. That goes down and then the distance between that and over here is like a page and page and a half. And then I will be done with this section. But I still have a lot to come down. I need to come down all the way here. So I've still got like another hoopful of stitching to get to before I can call the current page that I'm on complete and move on down to the next project. So that's where I am at. Uh, like I said, this is Inspiration by Rosewood Manor. Um, I'm doing it for my mom. She saw the pattern. She loved it. So one of these years when I get it done, I'll frame it up and give it to her for Christmas. And she will love it. She better love it because she chose the pattern. Um, I'm stitching it on, it's either a Lugana or a Joblian, um, an even weave of some sort. I don't, I don't even know. It's been so long. I think it might be ivory. I've been calling it ivory Lugana, but in all reality I really I don't know okay let me get this folded up oh here's the uh, the what's it's so you can see kind of what it'll be eventually and inspiration by Rosewood Manor let's get that kind of centered for you guys so there you go that is what I am working on at work during my lunch break it's a huge project, and I don't get a lot done while on the lunch break. Put that away. So I remember. So I remember to take it back to work tomorrow. It would be just my speed to remember to leave it home or forget to take it to work. You know that thing. So 
What else am I working on? Oh, that would be um, the Oh Holy Night Nativity from Stony Creek. And I have got all of the primary stitching together. All done. It's This thing is huge, you guys. It's larger than my... See, it's just, it's huge. It's more than two feet. Um, it is on a 28 count, so that's why it's larger. Um, I did 28 count because that's what they had at the uh, shop when I was there looking for the uh, fabric, the linen to put it on in a, night, in a good blue. So, so there you go. I have got all the principal X's done and all that is left now is back stitching. So, you kind of see those peppers thing, what's it? Moving on down over here to our wise men. Last week I was partially through one of the wise men our last, our third wise man, so I finished him up last week and then I added in all of this um, white and red border with the vine that goes across it added all that in, turned the corner, went down, I just have a little bit more vine to put in over there, the vine is back stitched so I guess I have started on the back stitch, but I mean the back stitch for all of the wonderful, wonderful people um, this is on Dwarf or dwarf blue. Um, it's by Picture This Plus. 28 count, as I said. And I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. It looks really, really nice. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. So, uh, yeah. Uh, do I want to know? I'll just fold it up and throw it in its box and deal with it later. Later, when I settle in tomorrow to stitch on it. So there, there is that. Get all my things put away. Um, stitching wise, I'm just feeling good. Puttering along, getting closer and closer and closer to uh, finishing that little thing off. Maybe in another month. Maybe not. It'd be nice to get it done by the end of September so I could have it framed in October and ready to give to Grandma for Christmas or whenever I see her next. She isn't going to turn 90 next year, so that's, I've kind of got the, uh, the tickers on. I mean, she'll probably live for another eight years, but you never know with grandmas. They're fragile. So, um, just doing that, and that is what we've been working on for stitching this month, week. It's only been a week. It feels like a month. It can't have been a month. Only a week, right? A week? Stitching. Oh, yarn. So, uh, somewhere along the line, I decided that I really was not having a fun time doing all this garter stitch. It was just bleh. I don't know what it is. I don't like the texture. I don't really love the way it looks. I really like um, stockinette stitch. I like the little V's. Those I absolutely love. What's going on here? Nothing. Anyway. So I've been working on my hitchhiker a little bit and it actually sat and uh, did nothing for a couple of weeks because I didn't want to do garter stitch anymore. I was done with it. Blah. Boring. Not exciting. So the other day I thought, well, I'll come along and I'll throw in a stockinette row. So as you can see here on my my hitchhiker, I've thrown in a stockinette row, and I looked at that and I thought, I really like that, but I couldn't just go from all garter to all stockinette, so I did just one um, toothy repeat of the stockinette, and then I'm doing two two three repeats of garter, and then I'll do a stockinette, a garter, two stockinettes, a garter, and then just continue on with stockinette. So hopefully that will blend in, you know, kind of nicely. Um, see what we've got. I'm sad that I don't have any more big old random bits of of uh, yarn to splice in just for a fun color here and there and do whatever. But so this is what I've done. Um, let's see, where's my progress keeper? So down here is where you last saw it, and I've done all of that. I think it's been two weeks since I bothered to show it to you, so I just kind of 
making up it making it up as I go along. So I need to figure out a little bit different thing to do down here on this end because it's it's curling this edge is curling back. And then over here, this is curling um, forward a little bit. So I need to decide, figure out, well, I can just play with it. It's not like this is going into the fair entry or going to win me any grand prizes. Um, I'm knitting this on a pair of, hmm, I forget the name now, Knitter's Pride. They're uh, Knitter's Pride uh, Dreams in a, in a four. So they're, they're a fairly small one. Um, I need to knit it off and put it on a pair of my Haya Haya Sharps and maybe I'll enjoy that a lot more, but this is good mindless knitting. This is what gets taken to church. And I sit there in the back and just go back and forth on it a little bit at a time. So there is, there is that one fun project that I'm working on. And then we have my 100 acre wood. Um, this is, let's see, Hitchhiker is Martina Bem uh, on Ravelry, Bat Patterns on Ravelry. And then this is my 100 Acre Wood. It is a shawl by Helen Stewart, a Curious Handmaid, also on uh, Ravelry. And let's see, we'll show it kind of here in the middle. So there is my stitch marker from where I started. And this just this is my center. So that's where I was last week. And I did. Um, eight rows there of this textury stitch where you just slip a stitch and do a couple rows and then move it up and then knit it in and I had the best time doing that. I really enjoyed just doing that little bit of of texture stitch. So I've got one more eight row repeat on the texture stitch to do. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully um, I'll get some time to do that this week. You never know. Um, with the Oh Holy Night Nativity being really my focus right now, I haven't knit very much, but I love this. I really love those two little, see, I'll show you really close. There's my textury stitch. I like it. I hope the camera focused. I can't see the camera. Can you see the top of my head? Who knows? Who knows at all? So that is what I have been working on as far as my knitting goes. Yarnquisitions. Um, not too many this week, but still there are some. Um, I happen to be running around the Etsy looking for yarn that had pansy in the name, and I found this wonderfully, terrifically, holy cow, that is super bright. This one is called, what is it, Neon Pansy? Electric Pansies. Yeah, you can see that it is definitely electric. It's really a hot, hot pink and uh, a not too subtle purple. Um, big, bold, uh, just wow! So there's that. And from the same uh, shop, let's see, what was this one? This was Denim something or another, uh, Denim Dreams. And you can see it's, it's a lot more subdued, more my colors, you know, with the blues and the soft, um, softer purples. But uh, when I discovered that I really like doing the texture stitches, I started searching on Ravelry for patterns for shawls that have a lot of texture stitches. And I saw some really interesting ones. And I think I'm just going to go crazy Stephen... Well, I'm not going to do a Stephen West, but I do the crazy Stephen West thing and just use these two for a two-colored um, texture type shawl. I think there's enough contrast between the, the blues and the purples here with the pinks and the purples down here. Um, it will be loud. It will be obnoxious. Um, it should be a little fun. As soon as I finish one of my other two shawls so I can catch it, cast on a new shawl. Must finish something before casting on new. So I mentioned last week that Mom and I had uh, tool, toured around um, the Wasatch Front and went to uh, several shops on our yarn tour. Well, at the end of the tour, you turn in your... Um... So I accidentally flashed my phone number there as I was showing you the card that you get all your stamps on and get turned in. And so at the end of the shop run, I turned in my card. So... Here's sort of everybody in Utah who participated in the Yarn Shop Shop Out. Oh, my 
my fingers aren't too much in the way. But anyway, you can get an idea of where they all are. But I dropped mine off at Wasatch and Wool, and they called me and said I won one of their door prizes. Yay! So, on Saturday, Mom and I went back up to Park City. Um, my sister decided to come too. And so one of the things in the, the little prize bag is this little accessory bag. It's made of mesh, um, silvery gray in color. Kind of a cute thing made by Walker, San Francisco. I approve of San Francisco since I lived there for four years in my, uh, right out, right when I was out of college, more or less. Went out there for an adventure and had an adventure and it was a good adventure and then I got homesick and made home. So there's that. Let's see, they uh, purchased a couple of um, patterns. So here is a hat pattern. This is Harlow uh, by Andrea Mowry hat pattern. So there's that. And then this uh, fancy zebra um, cowl from, I have to, Espace Tracot La Nuterie Moderne. They're in Quebec. Quebec? Quebec, I believe, is the uh, proper pronunciation. So there was this, those two patterns. And then here is the yarn bundle. So it is um, let's see, 200, let's look again, make sure I get it right. 230 yards of uh, cashmere in the, uh, the white and the gray. Um, it's 100% cashmere. It is super soft, you guys. Sport weight. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Made in the US of A and this really fun, loud pink color that um, goes with it. So I could definitely the zebra. So I like it. I'm thrilled. Oh, you guys, this stuff is so soft. Maybe you just have to knit me a stuffy or a pillow to, to go cuddle with at night when I go to sleep. So that was my grand prize winnings. Really, really pleased with that. We had such a good time uh, driving up. It takes about an hour because we went over the mountain. We went the back route. From, from Provo up to uh, Park City. So we went and got that. And then mom has a uh, gift certificate for Blazing Needles. So then we went down the hill into Salt Lake City to Blazing Needles where we looked around and saw some beautiful, beautiful yarn. But I had just won a prize and just spent a bunch of money on yarn the previous week. So I refrained. I didn't buy any additional yarn. Um, the other stuff I got from eBay and not eBay from Etsy and it was already in the mail blah 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 anyway so I was good I did not buy anything this week last week yes so uh, there was that and then mom and I after we got back from Salt Lake she was looking for um, some borders for a couple of twin size quilts she's making for uh, the nieces her grands um, and so we went to a couple quilt stores um, looking for fabric and uh, one of the quilt stores we stopped at was Harmony which was also uh, the yarn shop and they use a pansy for their logo and somebody over there quilts uh, crochets up a ton of these little little pansies so you know how I feel about the pansies and I'd seen them when we were there on Shop Hop so I went and digging through them and chose this cute little one and it got to come and live home come and live with me so that is everything for, I mean, I had a good busy Saturday. We just went and went and went, and when it was time to stop, I was ready to stop, and I went to sleep, and it was glorious. I just, you know, there's nothing that comes between me and my sleep. Even stitching does not come between me and sleep. When I'm tired, I'm tired, and we're all over it. So, anyway, there is that. Flubies! It has been at least three weeks since I have uh, read off the list of Flubies, and there are so many new uh, new people that are joining the community. It's really a lot of fun. I think today I went through and added five to eight people um, to my watch later list, so I need to get that done tomorrow so that I will have met them by the time next week's video rolls around so I can introduce them to you. But let's start with the lovely people I met in the past few um, weeks. 
So Bird Stitcher Colorado uh, shares several of her recent FFOs. Uh, she's uh, finished uh, Woolamina, which was one of the new releases. So cute, so cute. I love, it was a darling thing. Anyway, she has some really great projects. Uh, Diana Zaslow, uh, Dee's Delightful Stitcher. Uh, she's a, a former Jersey girl. I think she's in Florida now. A Stitcher 20 plus years. Uh, she shares some of her beautiful past FFOs. Um... She's working on Calendar Bears and European Bistro. Oh no, maybe those were the... You guys know my notes are terrible. But there are Calendar Bears. And there's the European Bistro, which is a fabulous um, uh, dimensions kit that she shared. And Fun Whips. Uh, the Silver Scissors. Scissor. She is another musical theater person. She gives us the, get, the uh, Know Your Needleworker tag. Um, and she is getting getting ready to start her fall stitcher. Uh, she has some great pattern picks, and she's a Utahn. Woo! -hoo! Probably ought to see if she's done anything at the Hale where I've worked. Maybe I'm terrible with names and faces. That's what I'm dreading about going to Arizona. Is I am terrible with names and faces. I just it's it's terrible. I mean, there have been times where you know I, I I'm at work. And I see these people every single day at work. And if I run into them at like Target or the grocery store, I have no idea who this person is. Absolutely no idea. So, it's bad. Anyway, that aside, rabbit trail. Uh, the next stitcher I met uh, was Blue Horse Yellow Cow. Uh, she's slowly changing from a gift stitcher to a selfish stitcher. And rightly she should because you need to have some of the things that you have stitched. Uh, she gives us the Know Your Needleworker tag and shares some of her cute finished stitches. Stitchy in Colorado. Uh, this is Trish and Jack. Uh, Trish is a knitter and stitcher. Uh, Jack shares his first stitches and a completely FFO'd project. Uh, Trish has a great uh, FFO as well. Um, Whips and Chatter, they're a great team. Uh, next I met Charlotte ML. She enjoys stitching fandoms and video games for sprites, and she's working on several fantastic sals. Uh, I met the, craf the crafty Welshie. She starts us off with the Know Your Needleworker tag, uh, shares uh, uh, the whip that she is currently working on. Uh, oh, shares the work she's working on. Oh, and that is her current favorite. Um, and there are some Frosted Pumpkin stitches in there as well. So if you're a Frosted Pumpkin fan, Definitely go check out her work. Let's see. Then I met uh, Tanya Kletcher. She is the Zen Stitcher. Uh, she is working on a beautiful uh, blue-themed blue sampler uh, with fantastic plants and insects. Um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous sampler. And then she also shares with us an FFO of a pincushion. Uh, lovely, lovely projects all around. Uh, next, I met the girls of Starlight Stitchery, LLC, and as we've all heard by now, they have purchased uh, Friendship Crossing up there in uh, Corvallis, Oregon, and they're working on updating everything and bringing it into the modern world, and they're just two cute girls. Um, they're having, they're having a, to a good time living their dreams, so hopefully all you Oregonites can get up there to Corvallis and help them revitalize the little shop that they've bought. Uh, next, I met Rootby, Ruby Ratbags Stitches. Uh, lots of lovely Lizzie Kate stitches, um, and she was just delightfully eclectic. Uh, I met Gigi uh, Elroy. Um, sh I think she might be Portuguese. It was definitely in a, a different language. I recognized uh, Que Legal which means cool in Portuguese in, in one of her, um, either in her description about what she's talking about or she said it. Uh, my dad is, has spent quite a lot, bit of time in Brazil and he, speech, he speaks Portuguese, so this is the only thing I, I picked up. Um, anyway, maybe it's Spanish, maybe it's Portuguese. I know they are vastly different and the Spaniards would be mad at me for um, saying that it's Spanish and the Brazilians would be mad at me for saying it is 
the Spaniards would be mad at me for saying Portuguese is Spanish and the Brazilians will be mad at me for saying Spanish is Portuguese. No, wait, whatever. Go check her out. She stitches beautifully. Um, uh, Liz, a Disney craft girl, she has some other videos sharing some different projects, but what was most interesting about her video, that uh, one of them that I watched, is she had a bit of information about the closure of MCG Textiles and the removal of the Kincaid Disney um, kits uh, from the market. So if you're wondering where did the kits go, what's become of them, um, all of that, go check out her channel. Uh, she has some good information for you guys. Um, I haven't been able to be back around to see if she's done a traditional flash tube or not, but um, she was a sweetheart. Uh, next, I met Kentucky Sass. Uh, she shares several of her beautiful finishes. Um, she knows the three inch post-it trick. Let's see if I have a three inch post-it trick. I do. I do, I do, I do. Well, I have a three inch post-it. Here we go. So. You guys don't need a fancy pants um, finger stitch starter. If you've got a post-it note, this thing is roughly three inches square. Stick it on your pen, needle goes down, that's where you start. I won't lie, because the fancy pants um, stitch starters are fun. And I do have one from Shepherd's Bush. Great, great collector's item. But a three inch post-it will uh, tide you over. Um, anyway, so she's done a few more videos. She's a delight. Uh, Kentucky Sass. Welsh Girl Stitches. I feel like we're being invaded by the Welsh. Go ladies. Uh, she starts us off with the uh, Know Your Needle Worker tag and shares uh, some of her whips, which include a Haid and a few Lizzie Cates. So she was worth, everybody is worth going to check out. But go check her out. And then we have Lindsay, uh, the Scruffy Kitty. She gives us a history of her stitching journal journey and a whip parade. So lots of darling Christmas ornaments and other fun stuff. Go check her out. Uh, I met Peter, Sp Peter Spraw, and he is a crocheter and a stitcher. Uh, he shares his first finishes and several of his whips. He's really self-conscious about his accent. If I were to guess, I would have to say English is his second language, but he acquits himself very well in English. Um, and go check him out. Go say hello. Uh, I met Stitchin' Mama. She is a new stitcher. Uh, she shares her first project uh, with us and some other fun whips. Um, she seems to be a full coverage stitcher and a chart collector. And I think we can all relate to being chart collectors. Uh, Junebug Crafts uh, returns to uh, returns with a new channel name uh, after removing her last one. And I can't. I'm sorry. I don't remember what her last uh, um, channel was called. Anyway, she's working on a beautiful Silver Creek, Creek samplers as a whip, and it's it's a pattern that I have been eyeing, you guys. And look at this. We have filled up filled up an entire booklet of notes of new stitchers. Had to move on to the yellow legal pad. Uh, the uh, next stitcher I met is uh, Lisa Loves Yarn. Yarn. So she already knits and sews, so she is a multi crafter. She gives us a bit of intro and uh, her stitching history. Uh, she likes stitches of cats, Scotland, and other whips shared. Then we have Marbear Stitching. She love uh, that she's playing fetch with her dog as she's um, uh, giving her intro. So she's talking to us and the dog is just, you know, bringing up the ball. She picks it up, just tosses it so casually. It's just, it was a delight. Um, she, in, she enjoys stitching for the fandoms. So that's what I wrote down. As usual, in the uh, drop down description box below, I will put links to everybody's channels. Please take the time to uh, go over there, check out their videos, say, tell them hello, um, give them a warm floss tube welcome. So I guess the last little bit we have is news, notes, and nonsense. Um, where do we want to start? Uh, one of you asked how Princess came to live with me. Um, my cousin had two cats and her boyfriend had two cats, so when they moved in together, 
they had four cats. However, the apartment complex where they were living only allowed two cats in the apartment. So two of the cats needed to find a, a new home. And just the way it was working, Princess was not getting along with any of the other cats. And so I said, yeah, I'll take her. I, you know, I thought I might be a cat person. And so I said, yeah, I will take on, you know, Princess. She can come live with me uh, just because I'm sort of a soft heart. And if I believe if I have the means to take care of an animal who is looking for a home, then it is my duty to take care of an animal who is looking for a home. So she came to live with me, and I think she spent the first two years hiding under my bed or under the couch or just kind of only coming out whenever, well, hardly coming out at all. Um, I did have one friend who she fell madly in love with, and whenever he would come over, she was out almost immediately. So, um, cats, right? Anyway, she's not really a cuddle cat, and I was expecting a cuddle cat. Um, if you try to pet her, she just walks back and forth, you know, like a car going through a car wash almost. She doesn't want to stand close to you. She, she'll, she's standoffish in the past so I said the first two years she was real skittish real timid real unsure of herself but the longer she's been here uh, the more confident she's become so she'll come out when I'm home and I always get chewed out when I get home from work meow 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 I mean, she's just just talking to me up a storm um, here at the the condos uh, we're on a high enough balcony that I don't feel like she'll really jump off the balcony and so I've started to when the weather's nice I leave the door open she likes to go out and sit on the balcony and watch whatever's going on but as soon as something mean or scary runs by she just gallops back in the house um she sleeps on everything that's soft um I guess it's because I'm not a cat person. I don't understand people who get up from their chair and come back and there's a cat sleeping in the chair that they can't up dislodge the cat. I'm like, no, that's my, my chair. Move cat. Um, just anyway, stuff like that. So I hope I'm taking good care of her. I try to make sure that she has food that she likes and the litter box cleaned and we have playtime. There's the laser toy that she loves and there's the, uh, the toy with the feathers on the end that we... We, we play with too. Um, Costco has a pretty good deal on a cat tree so I've been thinking about getting a cat tree for her to see if she would you know like to have a cat tree next to um, maybe a window in the uh, craft room annex. Um, maybe she'd like that. I don't know. Um, so that's sort of how I became a princess's guardian owner however you want to call it. I'm not her mother. She is not my baby. Um, so I am not her parent. Um, anyway, so that's how Princess uh, came to live with me. So that was that was a question one of you asked. Um, coming up in September, my BFF down in Arkansas. I always have to think of, think think about it. She's delivering her two kids up to Idaho. So it looks like in September I got a trip to Idaho coming, so I can visit with her. I need to let my other peeps know that I'm gonna be there. See if they'll be there. Who knows? And, you know, get to meet everybody catch up have dinner eat all the things because that's what we do eating all the things and then the last little bit of random is just it's sometimes it's interesting how things hit you um in about a two-week period two women that i knew and worked with up at um, the provo temple uh, they both got engaged and they were both a little bit older than the typical demographic here in Utah who gets engaged. And while I love these women and they're fantastic, spectacular, smart women with a lot going for them, I mean, one of them is getting her PhD in chemistry, uh, the other is getting her a master's degree in um, psychology with some really interesting, um, Oh, words. Um, how people translate trauma between what would be their native language and what would be a uh, secondary language. How sometimes the emotional effects of the trauma are more apparent in their original um, language than it would be in the uh, second language. Anyway, interesting field of study. I mean, like I said, she's smart as a cookie. 
But the funny thing about this is, is these two friends of mine getting engaged just hit me with so much sadness, you know, for myself. And, I mean, seriously, we don't need to just wallow in self-pity. So on one end of it, you know, my mind's going, this is stupid. You just, you don't need to feel the way you feel. You are smart and independent and you are doing stuff. And on the other hand, I'm like, my culture tells me I should be married and there should be kids. And it's sort of this disconnect that, that kind of gets me sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I failed. The last time I was kissed was 20 years ago. So I spent the past week eating way too much stuff because I'm an emotional eater. Mm -hmm. It shows. I'm trying to be better about it. I've got to do something different. So it's just, you know, you can't help but think, what's wrong with me? So I don't know. I don't know. If any of you have got a nice man about eh, 48-ish, I tend to go for the dark-haired ones. If he's got a little salt and pepper at the temples, yes please, because that's definitely a mm -hmm. Nice guy, hard worker, good sense of humor. Maybe a little on the creative side. Send him my way! I'm tired of this lonely crap. Anyway, so let's end this one on a downer, right? Yeah, good. All right. That is everything that I have for today. And more than everything that I have for today. I hope you guys have had a great week. And I hope to get you get lots of stitching time in this upcoming week. That your errands are not too, too uh, troublesome. Your burdens are not too heavy. Um, be kind to one another. I think that's the only way to get out of this festering state of political upheaval. Let's not really get into politics, but I think if we are kind and civil to each other, a lot of improvement can be made. Um, I hope that frog stays far, far away from your stitching this week. Hugs and stitches, everybody. Bye.